are you going to learn not to say the obvious? We know the girls are here. <laughs> Hi, girls. How are you today? Oh, oh, super. The principal said it was the largest midterm enrollment in the history of Hooterville High. Eight new students. Oh, my. I sure am lucky. I got Miss Higgins for algebra and Miss Ferdy for typing. Well, good. Uh, Betty Jo, did you get signed up? Oh, sure. The Hawks are playing Crabwell Corners in a practice game next Saturday. And then we... Hold it, hold it, hold it. I was talking about your studies. Oh, that. Yeah, oh, that. Let me see your schedule. First period, gym. Second period, English. Third period, gym. Fourth period, lunch. Sixth period, gym. <laughs> Young lady, how come you have three gym classes? That was all I could get without skipping my lunch hour. <laughs> One gym class is enough for anybody. If you don't pay attention to your studies, your muscles are going to graduate before you do. You heard your mother, Betty Jo. Anyway, one gym period's a plenty. That's all I ever took, and look at the condition I'm in. Skip your lunch hour. <laughs> so you've got eight new students, huh? Seven girls and one boy. Well, I hope they're nice girls. You should see him. His name's Walter Thorpe. He's big and strong and handsome. He must be at least six feet four. He just towers over the home economics class. What's a big hulking guy doing in the home economics class? Blushing. He's the only boy in the class. And it's just awful the way the girls treat him. He looks like an embarrassed St. Bernard surrounded by a bunch of giggling nanny goats. <laughs> Bradley. Present. Miss Nelson. Miss Plout. Here. Miss Thorpe. <laughs> Miss Thorpe. <laughs> Miss Walter Thorpe. <laughs> oh, well, I, I meant, of course, Mr. Walter Thorpe. No, 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 no. No more of that, girls. We're here to work. I want to welcome you to our home economics class. And during this first semester, we'll uh, learn how to buy and construct clothing how to choose furnishings, such as um, rugs and drapes. We'll learn how to make uh, food budgets and how to cook good, nourishing meals. Now, doesn't that sound exciting? No. <laughs> we'll devote this first session to a matter that's dear to all of our feminine hearts, clothes. Now, let's think of some fashions that we might make right here in this class. There's a type of old-fashioned dress that's back in favor called a granny. Can any of you describe it? Henrietta? A granny is a high-necked, long sleeve garment with a high bodice and a slightly gathered skirt. That's very accurate and concise. Now, can any of you girls... Can any of you girls and boy... <laughs> describe a shift? I know. A shift is when the quarterback gets the ball from the center and he hands it to the left. <laughs> I mean, a, a shift is when you... Uh... You, uh, shove the gear from first in a second. <laughs> All right, girls. Walter knows more kinds of shifts than the rest of us. And if you gave him half a chance, he'd tell you a shift is a plain, sleeveless, straight dress, usually made out of cotton. Isn't it, Walter? Yeah, that's it. it it's a straight, sleeveless dress, usually made out of cotton. <laughs> Gee, Bobby Joe, you sure helped me off the spot. Thanks. They were just awful. They made me ashamed of being a girl. Better hurry. You'll be late for your next class, Miss Thorpe. <laughs> oh, Miss Thorpe, would you be good enough to fix my lunch for me tomorrow? <laughs> Miss Thorpe won't have time. She'll be too busy making her formal for the junior prom. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind them, Walter. <laughs> hey, Bobby Joe, how about me and you going to the movie tonight? No, thank you. Walter's coming to the house for dinner. Did you see the look on Gary's face? <laughs> he thought you meant it. I do. Gee, that sure is nice of you. Mother says dinner at six. Will that be okay? Well, I'll try, but it may take me quite a while to get into my granny. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Gee, Mom, you're a peach. You're a real doll. My gracious. 
I thought I already gave you your allowance. I mean it. Most mothers would raise a fuss if their daughters brought home a stranger for dinner without asking permission. Well, honey, your friends are my friends. Am I the only one in this house that could count? There ain't no guests in the hotel. How come we got an extra chair set up at the dinner table? Walter's coming for dinner. Walter? Oh, that character in your home economics class. He's not a character. It so happens he's very athletic. Last year, he won the 100-yard dash. That don't surprise me none. Any boy that take home economics would have to be able to run fast. <laughs> Uncle Joe, he's Bobby Joe's friend, and he's welcome here. Now, if you don't like it, you can just skip dinner. Well, like I was saying, any boy that take home economics must have a lot of character. <laughs> This is Bradley. If I took home economics 12 times, I could never turn out a meal like this. Oh, you don't have to go that far to get a meal around here. But it helps. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Walter. How come a big bruiser like you's enrolled in a sissy course like home economics? Uncle Joe, he gets enough of that at school. Oh, I don't mind from you folks. To answer your question, Mr. Carson, I'm taking a course in engineering and I needed a half a credit toward graduation. <laughs> and all the classes were filled up. That sounds reasonable. Oh, more pie, Walter? Oh, I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> oh, you just did. I don't know where you put all that food. Who cares? After I swallowed it, it's on its own. <laughs> Walter, don't worry about those silly high school girls. You'll find this hard to believe, but when I was that age, sometimes I was pretty ridiculous. Imagine those nincompoops laughing at this. Today in school, the teacher asked what a shift was. And Walter said it's when the quarterback threw the ball... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Well, I'm sure glad that Billy Joe outgrew that ridiculous age. I know just how you feel, Walter. I had the same problem as you did. You did? When I tried out for the baseball team. I was the only girl, and the fella sure ribbed me. Tell him about your first day, Billy Joe. Well, when the coach told us that the Pixley team had a stronger battery than ours, I said, why don't we all carry more flashlights? <laughs> <laughs> well, Walter, I hope a few of the things we've said have made you feel better. Oh, they have. Except for uh, facing those darn girls tomorrow. I wonder if they can shoot you for deserting high school. <laughs> if you can hear the train whistle all the way up here. Oh, sure he can. Well, nobody showed up at the stop. Charlie and me figured you couldn't hear our toots. Well, no, we heard it all right. The girls are a little late. Well, Charlie's worrying about the toots we've been wasting lately. You waste a toot here and you waste a toot there, and then when you need it the most, you don't have a toot to toot. I see. Hi, good morning. Sorry we held you up, Floyd, but we were trying to solve a problem. I thought you finished your homework last night. Well, this was a different kind of a problem. Yeah, a real tough one. Oh, Walter Thorpe. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> that's the fellow that's taking the class for girls. It's the only thing I ever heard that'd make me go back to school. Lloyd, <laughs> <laughs> it isn't funny. It ain't? Doggone that, Charlie. He told me it was funny. <laughs> I'll see you at the train. Girls, get your lunches. Thanks. Thanks. Maybe we can figure out what to do about Walter on the train. Now, girls, look, stop worrying about Walter. He's a big strapping fella. He can take care of himself. He doesn't need a lot of females fussing over him. And uh, here's an extra lunch for him. <laughs> Mom, you're a doll. We'll think of something for Walter. Uh, girls, look. You've done your best. Forget it. Maybe some other student will transfer a class or move. And then Walter can get out of home economics. Mom, you've solved it. I have? Sure. All we have to do is get some other kid to switch classes. And make room for Walter. Gee, thanks, Mom. Thanks. 
Why can't I solve my own problems that easy? <laughs> Look, Betty Joe, I can't drop calculus. My major's electronics. And I thought you were such a bright boy. What do you mean? There's no future in electronics. There isn't? No, it's a dying field. If I were a man, do you know what I'd be? I'd be a, a fashion designer or a chef. Are you kidding? That's for girls. Oh, wait, Edward. Uh, I've got it. I don't know why I didn't think of it before. There is you. Where? Philosophy. You even look like him. Like who? Ralph Waldo Emerson. <laughs> yes, Edward, you should be a philosopher. What does a philosopher do? Well, for one thing, he... he thinks. <laughs> well, I'm thinking. I think you're trying to get me to switch classes so Walter Thorpe can get out of home economics. I'll see you around. Any luck? No, you? Nobody will cooperate. There's Lyle Cabot. If we can get him to drop typing, there'll be a vacancy for Walter. But typing's part of Lyle's course in accounting. Well, we'll just have to change his career. <laughs> Hi, Lyle. How are you? Okay. <laughs> you know, my mom means well, but I'm sure getting sick of these clam sandwiches. <laughs> well, here, Lyle, have half of my nut bread and strawberry jam sandwich. Gee, thanks, Betty Joe. Oh, this is great. This is great. Sure helps tone down the taste of those clams. Lyle, say that again. Say what again? What you just said. All I said was your mom's sandwiches sure toned down the taste of those clams. Betty, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Definitely. Lyle, how long have you been taking public speaking? Uh, I'm not taking public speaking. I'm going to be an accountant. What a tragedy. That beautiful, resonant voice being hidden behind a desk in some stuffy banker office. Well, a voice like yours should be in a courtroom, swaying juries, or in Congress, performing Hamlet soliloquy from a stage. Gee, maybe you're right. Of course we are. Drop typing and take public speaking. Yeah, I'll take public speaking. And drop typing? Yeah. No, I'll take both courses. Then I can type up my own speeches. Oh, thanks a lot, Thank you. Thank you. Gee, if I hurry, maybe I can still join the debating team. <laughs> and I'll need eight cans of apricots, 12 cans of lima beans, six cans of... You got that, Sam? You better back up to the apricots. Oh, better make that nine cans of apricots, 10 cans of lima beans. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mr. Drucker. Hi, oh, Betty Joe. Hi, honey. School out already? Yeah. Boy, am I glad I ran into you. You solved everything. I did. Now, let's Sam. see, Kate. That was well, you nine sure cans. did. Mom, your plan worked perfectly. That, that's right, Sam. Ten cans of lima beans, six cans of asparagus. What plan? Well, to get someone to switch classes with Walter. Now, he's out of home economics and into typing. And lots of boys take typing. Hey, you are, Kate. Here's your lima beans and here's your asparagus. Oh, that's what you have. Oh, I see. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mr. Jones. Oh, hi, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Did you tell Mom? Let's see, Sam. I'm no, I was just going to tell her. Oh, no, let's see, Kate. Oh, you, you said tell you her, Bobby. Here's your Mom. asparagus and lima Sam, we might as well flow with the tide. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Bobby Joe? It was so simple. I got Marvin to change from his two o'clock gym class into archaeology. And when Doris found out that Marvin was in two o'clock archaeology class, she changed from her ten o'clock archaeology class into two o'clock. <laughs> see? That's fine. But how does that get Walter out of home economics? Don't you see, Kate, when, when Doris switches from four o'clock peaches to six o'clock asparagus, that made an opening in cream spinach. And things are difficult enough. <laughs> now, I got it straight up to the point where Doris switches her archaeology class so that she can be near Marvin, and then you lost me. Oh, wait a minute. Um, Marvin switches from gym to archaeology. Right. And here comes Doris, so she can be close to Marvin. And Walter leaves home economics and zips into typing. Right. Well, wait a second. What made the opening in typing class? This sauerkraut dropped typing in home economics and moved into Doris's old 10 o'clock archaeology class. <laughs> well, that's brilliant. But how did you maneuver sauerkraut into archaeology? That was the easiest part of all. Yeah. Meet Miss Sauerkraut. <laughs> you darn. <laughs> what are you taking archaeology for? What's wrong with it? 
Well, you'll be the only housewife in Hooterville with a mummy in her living room. <laughs> Young lady, you transfer right back to home economics and typing. Well, then Doris can't be near Marvin. Poor Walter. He'll be right back in home economics. I would rather have Walter in home economics than my daughter traipsing all over Egypt, digging up broken crockery, and that is that. <laughs> you got more order, Sam? Sure. Four cans of Marvin, six cans of Doris, and eight cans of Walter. <laughs> Maybe I should take up knitting. It's less dangerous. You're doing fine. Oh, Sandra, you're coming along just fine. That'll be a beautiful rug for your family room. And girls, just look at Mildred's throw rug. At the rate she's going, she'll have it completed in another day. And how is your rug coming, Walter? Well, Walter has outdone us all. He's made a wall-to-wall -wall carpet for his canary cage. <laughs> People shouldn't speak unless they know what they're talking about. Anyone can see Walter's making up. A coaster for an egg cup. I'm sure that any egg cup that has Walter's coaster under it will be very proud of itself. <laughs> uh, girls, just a minute, just a minute. I want to give you your assignment for tomorrow. Now, listen closely. This is a very exciting challenge. I want you all to imagine that you are married. <laughs> now, I'll set the scene for you. It's late afternoon, and you're at home, and you get a phone call from your husband or from your wife, as the case may be. <laughs> and he or she is bringing home his or, or her boss. <laughs> and you must prepare a dinner in 20 minutes for this very important occasion. Yes. Now, I want you all to think of it tonight. And then tomorrow, in class, you'll have exactly 20 minutes to prepare a full dinner. Now, you'll be judged on resourcefulness, speed, attractiveness of the table, and the taste of the food. Class dismissed. I'm sure not showing up for class tomorrow. You can tell the teacher that Miss Thorpe is home with a bad case of housemaid's knee. Don't give up, Walter. There must be a way out. Yeah, I know. Which way to Steuben's bluff? <laughs> Uncle Joe, you've just got to do it. Ask me anything else, Kate, but not that. <laughs> now, if you don't, Walter could flunk his test tomorrow. You're wasting your breath, Kate. I will not loan my watch to them teenagers. But they only need it for 20 minutes while they time Walter. Kate, this watch was given to me by my grandfather. It's absolutely irreplaceable. It means more to me than Big Ben means to... Princess Margaret. <laughs> Uncle Joe, you're not Princess Margaret. Now stop being stubborn and hand over the watch. I learned my lesson when I loaned it to Fred Ziffel. He let his pet pig, Arnold, play with it. <laughs> Them dents on there's Arnold's tooth mark. Well, the girls aren't going to bite it. Give me that back, you pickpocket. Make him give it back, Kate. <laughs> All right, boy, give him back the watch. <laughs> And if he doesn't want to be official timekeeper, well, I guess that's up to him. Huh? You didn't say nothing about me being official timekeeper. Well, we've got Walter all set up in the kitchen. Well, fine. And your Uncle Joe has generously volunteered to be timekeeper. Okay, then we're all ready to go. Now, Uncle Joe, this has got to be split-second timing. When the big hand reaches the next minute, yell go. Okay. Oh, Mom, huh? stay out of the kitchen during the test. Yes, ma'am. You girls are going to a lot of trouble for nothing. That's enough to feed us talk. If Oscar of the Waldorf thought that way, he'd still be parking cars. <laughs> You've got 20 minutes to make the salad, the soup, the entree, the side dishes, and the dessert. Ready, Walter? Where's the icebox? Right in front of you. Now, there's a stove and there's a sink. Got it straight now? Uh, I guess so. Any time now! Go! No, no, no. For the salad. Oh, start. Time out, Uncle Joe. Are you ready yet? Not quite, Uncle Joe. Well, hurry up. 
Uncle Joe, be patient. That's a fifth false start. You know what time it is? Walter's wasted 98 minutes cooking dinner in 20. Well, he's learning. It's no use, Kate. That boy will never make anybody a good housewife. <laughs> I'm hungry. Your taste buds can use the rest. We're all set up again. Go! <laughs> Let the salad go. Yes, you can make it while your main course is cooking. The stove, the stove. Water, water. What's he cooking? Yeah. Uh... We'll never know. <laughs> Come on, Uncle Joe. We <laughs> just burnt the dinner. I'm hopeless, Mrs. Bradley. As soon as I clean up your kitchen, I'm getting out of here. And tomorrow, I'm quitting school. Well, we gave it the old country try. Girls, I think I may have thought of something that could help Walter. Nothing's going to help me. Now, wait a minute, Walter. I had the same situation happen to me once when the girl's father brought a friend home to dinner. And this is what I did. All right, class. Now, girls, you know the rules. You've been given a problem. Your husband has phoned that he's bringing home the boss to dinner. And you have only 20 minutes to prepare an attractive, tasty meal. Now, ready, set, go. Well, Walter, you know you're included in this test, too. Oh, yes, ma'am. Well, you don't seem to understand the situation. You're in charge of the household, and your wife has telephoned that she's bringing home the boss to dinner. Oh, I understand. But you only have 20 minutes to prepare the dinner. It's, uh, no trouble. Well, then what would you do? How was the dinner? Delicious. Best meal I've had in years. Young lady, I'm giving you a raise. <laughs> you made your point, Walter. You passed the test. Kate, I never cease to marvel at the ingenuity of young people these days. We'd never have thought of this idea, would we? <laughs> no, teacher. Never in a million years. <laughs> presentation.